The unsticking of glue that holds Antarctica together has emerged as a major threat to Antarctica's ice shelves. Here's what you need to know. The 2017 calving of the A68 iceberg from Antarctica's Larsen Sea ice shelf was likely caused by thinning ice melange, the mix of wind-blown snow, iceberg debris, and frozen seawater that normally acts to glue rifts together with larger blocks. That's according to a new study in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, which found the circulation of ocean water beneath ice shelves and radiative warming from above gradually deteriorates the ice melange. Counterintuitively, if the ice shelves themselves thin, rifts tend to heal, with average annual widening rates dropping from 79 to 22 meters or 259 to 72 feet. Additionally, if both the shelves and the melange thinned, this also slowed rift widening. Only when the melange thinned separately to the ice shelf was rift widening found to increase from an average annual rate of 76 to 112 meters or 249 to 367 feet. The reason for that is the ice melange starts out much thinner than the ice shelf itself, so when it thins down to 10 or 15 meters thick, it becomes akin to water, allowing the ice shelf rifts to be released and start to crack. The study's lead author, Eric Larauer, cited by SciTech Daily, says this idea explains why the A68 iceberg was able to break from the Larsen Sea ice shelf in the dead of the Antarctic winter, because even in winter, warmer ocean water can reach the melange from below. Previously, scientists had thought such large iceberg calving events in the Antarctic Peninsula were caused by hydrofracturing, according to Larauer, whereby melt pools on the surface allow water to seep down through the cracks in the ice shelf, which expand when the water freezes again. But this would not be possible in the dead of winter, with no melt pools present. The study then partially explains how ice shelves can start retreating and becoming unstable decades before hydrofracturing could act on them, and this, according to one of the study's co-authors, means we may need to rethink our estimates about the timing and extent of sea level rise from polar ice loss, i.e., it could come sooner and with a bigger bang than expected. It may seem odd that we are still discovering such fundamental ideas about what is happening to our planet, but in fact, vast areas of Antarctic knowledge remain untapped. For instance, earlier this year, The Guardian reported that a study by the Chinese Academy of Sciences found that climate change's effect on both Earth's poles has shifted the Earth's axis by an unprecedented margin. The planet's geographic north and south poles are the points where its axis of rotation intersects the surface, but they are not fixed. Changes in how the Earth's mass is distributed around the planet cause the axis, and therefore the poles, to move. In the past, only natural factors, such as ocean currents and the convection of hot rock in the deep earth, contributed to the drifting of the poles. But the new research shows that since the 1990s, the loss of hundreds of billions of tons of ice a year into the oceans, resulting from global warming, has caused the poles to move in new directions. The scientists found the average speed of drift from 1995 to 2020 was 17 times faster than from 1981 to 1995. Since 1980, the positions of the poles have moved about 4 meters. The study theorizes that the accelerated decline of water stored on land is the main driver of the rapid polar drift since the 1990s. We are also actually still finding new creatures below the ice, with scientists earlier this year rethinking the limits of life on Earth after stumbling on a group of strange organisms living deep under a 900-meter-thick ice shelf. The Guardian reported at the time that researchers accidentally found a life-bearing rock after sinking a borehole through the filchner ron ice shelf to obtain a sediment core from the seabed. While the rocks spoiled their chances of obtaining the core, footage from a video camera captured unexpected images of organisms living far beneath an ice shelf. Surveys of Antarctic marine life have never previously found such stationary filter feeders, which survive by ingesting food that falls down on them. It had previously been assumed that the total darkness, the lack of food, and the freezing water was too hostile for them. Footage of the boulder shows that it is home to at least two types of sponge, one of which has a long stem that opens into a head. Organisms that look like tube worms, or stuffed barnacles, also appear to be growing on the rock. Scientists theorize the animals feed on dead plankton, which is carried more than 600 kilometers by currents, before reaching them. We're also still working to understand exactly what kind of effects temperature increases caused by humans will have on animal life like that. In 2017, scientists placed heated panels on the seabed near the UK's Rothera Research Station on the Antarctic Peninsula. The panels heated the water a few millimeters above them for a year, with researchers checking in and photographing the area periodically. Researchers found that the amount of sea life there had doubled after a rise of 1 degree Celsius. But after an increase of 2 degrees Celsius, only certain species continued to grow. 
With a view to facilitating these kinds of discoveries, a British architectural firm has designed the Discovery Building for the British Arctic Survey Research Team in Antarctica. Construction began on January 30, 2020. The building's exterior will be made with metal panels that are pale blue in color to prevent high ultraviolet rays from causing degradation to the structure, according to a press release from the architectural firm. The color is also a reference to the Antarctic sky. The Discovery Building will also have a wind deflector along its roofline that will be used to deflect cold air in the Antarctic so that the wind will travel down the structure's facade. This will help to minimize snow accumulation around the building. The structure also consists of a control tower from its roof. The tower will provide a 360-degree view of the area. The structure is expected to be completed in 2023. A group of U.S. scientists have unraveled the mystery of why Blood Falls in Antarctica gets its red color. Blood Falls pours from the Taylor Glacier in Antarctica's McMurdo Dry Valleys. Scientists discovered that the lake trapped under the glacier has an unusually high concentration of salt. Salt water has a lower freezing point than water and releases heat as it freezes. This causes glacier ice to melt and enables water to flow. Researchers also discovered iron-rich brine in the water, which oxidizes as soon as it makes contact with the oxygen in the air. This causes the waterfall to turn a red color. Blood Falls was first discovered by geoscientist Griffith Taylor in 1911. Scientists had previously theorized that the water's red color was caused by red algae. Endangered blue whales are making a comeback. Researchers from the British Antarctic Survey have found an increase of blue whales around the island of South Georgia near Antarctica. According to BBC News, the whale population in South Georgia declined due to extensive hunting in the early 20th century. The researchers embarked on several missions to the waters of South Georgia from January 1, 2018 to January 1, 2020 and spotted roughly 55 blue whales. Researchers used advanced acoustics to locate different whales and attached satellite tags to identify them. They also collected skin samples and flew drones over the whales to assess their body conditions. The report suggests that the whales may be returning to South Georgia waters for feeding purposes, which is, in turn, impacting the reproductive rate of the whale population. According to British Antarctic Survey's website, South Georgia may have been an important place for many whale species in the past due to its influx of Antarctic krill and immense seasonal productivity. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.